Simple money innovation. Money. As no, simple, simple as that. that. Yeah. All right. For security experts and many Nigerians, the tonic for insecurity ravaging Nigeria is creation of state police. The bill to that effect is currently being considered at the National Assembly. Now, speakers of the 36 state houses of assembly have thrown their weights behind constitutional review for the establishment of the state, of state police. The speakers under the ages of conference of speakers of state legislatures of Nigeria made this known in a communique signed by the chairman of the body. Adebo Ogudoyi. Jide, mm -hmm. this committee, committee of speakers, you know, because if we are amending the constitution, yeah. this creation of state police will require the amendment of the existing law. And if we are going to do that, we are going to need the buy-in of at least two thirds of that state. So if the speaker, the committee of speakers, if they are saying that, yes, it is time, I think this agitation is just, um, you know, um, increasing day by day. Yes, but uh, there are still some governors opposed to this idea. Hmm. I remember the uh, Nasrallah governor hmm. uh, publicly saying, no, well, we don't want it. Hmm. And um, but no states, hmm. but no states too, right? I'm aware that they don't want it. Hmm. But the law is clear. If we can get uh, two thirds, two thirds, fully. You have state police. My own argument is don't just start state police. Let the law permit them to carry arms. The kind of arms that Dogo Gide and Co. <laughs> are carrying. <laughs> because you won't be able to confront them without carrying. Look at uh, Zamfara and Kasina. They set up um, vigilance uh, units which are more or less like their own homegrown security. Uh -huh. mm. But they are slaughtering those boys like rams. Mm. If you know how many of them they've killed in Zamfara alone, mm. you will weep publicly. Yeah. They slaughtered them one day, killed mm. more than 50. You know, I mean, it makes no sense. Mm. You can't say they should carry them gun and go and face this boy. It will not work. Mm. But it will not mm. work. Mm. But did they? I know that. Uh, what I'm saying is, I want to say police. In the past, I didn't want it. I know that state police can help. Even in our various states, mm -hmm. if not for the support, the governors are giving uh, uh, the police. I wonder where police will be. All right. Mm -hmm. but, I, but I disagree with you completely. There's a lot. I am opposed to state police because mm -hmm. of what I've seen. I was trying to talk about state independent electoral commission, which is a fraud, mm -hmm. open fraud. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if we have seen that, State Independent Electoral Commission. Governors use them to openly carry all the local government areas, put under their pocket, mm -hmm. because they will not lose one seat. Mm -hmm. And they are happy. Absolutely. Democrats, you are happy to conduct elections and carry everything. Now they will give you state police. Mm -hmm. The opposition will not come out of their, there are of some, their houses. There are so some. See, I will not uh, okay. agree. You, you know, before I, police, before I, I supported not. it, mm -hmm. There were some things that I read, mm. even the bill. I've seen people like the governor of Cardinal State now, where people started working on it. I've seen some of the things they are trying to introduce, which it? will not allow governors to have overriding. In fact, the federal police would be, would be permitted when they, they have some issues. The federal police, when they come to the scene, okay. they take over. All right. Joining us via Zoom for more discussion on this is a security expert and retired deputy director of the State Security Service, the DSS, Dennis Amakri. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Amakri. Thank you very much. Thank you to be here with you. Yeah, you've listened to the back and forth on the disability of uh, state police. Or, mm. <laughs> so, yes. what, what's your take? Where do you stand? <laughs> I know you don't stand, you are standing in between the lines. <laughs> the, the thing is this, all of us agree that state police is desirable. Desirable in the sense that crime is committed in a locality. You know, so to arrest that crime, 
the police, the law enforcement must be near to that particular place, mm. you know, for starters. Yes. Because we cannot. You look at the Nigerian police structure right now. There is an IG in Abuja and then commissioners of police in the state and then all the DPS. way down you have uh, some local governments don't even have up to about six policemen. Six. Yes. Local government. Yes, all right. So what do we do? We we balkanize it in such a way this the policing itself should be a state affair. Hmm. Should be a state affair. Uh, law enforcement, um, crimes, detecting and investigating crimes and all, then of course we will have federal police. Yes. Or you can call them federal police agencies. Mm. And those ones are the ones that are dealing with crimes that cut across states. Okay. That cut across states. Okay. Like, like drug trafficking. Okay. Like money laundering, we have EFCC already. Mm -hmm. uh, like national security, we have DSS. You know, these are federal police. Yes. Um, you want to talk of NDLA, you know, and stuff like that. But the uh, the bulk of the state policing, the state, uh, the the bulk of policing is in the states, mm. and they are the ones that look at murder and all those kind of things, mm. um, forgery, uh, uh, killing people, and all those kind of things, arson and all the rest. So, in that kind of situation, we, what we need to do is to strengthen the state police, but I know your fears. You don't want the influence, you know, they should not be influenced by the governors. Yes. And that is B. And that is going to be caused by the kind of laws that set them up. Mm. Now, I, I know you, you travel a lot, and uh, we've been told that even in the U.S. and other places, that even hospitals and even uh, schools, universities have their police. Mm. Is, it, is it not possible for us to have such a... Such a Arrangements. Yes, where even the universities have their own police, the counties... That means the, like the local governments now. You have their own police. Yes. Okay, thank you very much for that question. You know, in the states, the state police itself, as I said it earlier, are the ones in, uh, responsible for the bulk of policing. Yes. But you have little, like I said, problem is committed in locality. So, the university I went to have its own university police. Mm -hmm. The hospital I went to just last week has their hospital police. Oh. You know, and you, you have estates. Estates have their policing systems. Now, all these policing systems, what do they do? They just monitor. And then, of course, if there is any crime being committed, they call the state police to come and take over. Yeah. Now, if the state police takes over and it is like a drug situation, hmm. they know that it is not a state matter. Yes. They call the FBI to come in to take over because that's a federal thing. Of mm -hmm. yes. In Nigeria, many people will not want to, they want to solve the problem by themselves because something will come out of it. You know, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. kind of okay. mentality okay. is what is stopping us. Yeah, because when you look at uh, this state police thing we've been talking about, it is not now that it started. You know, right in the assembly, the Senate, up to the seventh or sixth Senate, they, they, they brought out the idea of state police. And guess who has knocked it out all the time? Retired police DIGs who are in the Senate. Mm. And even right now, our dear IGP is saying that no, he's not interested in it. Why? Because I think the police sees it as a, a subtraction, subtraction of their own powers, mm. you know. Well, but you cannot be all powerful. No, no. It is not effective, you know. And let us allow the people, the local people, to solve their own criminal problems. If there's a thief in a town, I think everybody knows him. And everybody can call the policeman and say, you see that man, a thief, oh. even 
parents will tell their children, don't go to that man, no. he is not a good man, because they know them. And that's how we want to do poll. We have to change the structure and the mentality of policing in our society. Let, let's look at the issue of um, arms bearing. Some states have tried to organize a motekun and uh, vigilance outfits in the, the northwest out of frustration with banditry, for example. But those, because the law does not permit them to carry assault rifles and the rest, they are usually sitting dogs to the, to the bandits who have um, sophisticated, sophisticated weapons at their disposal. What would you recommend, or are you worried too, uh, about um, the law permitting these people to carry high caliber weapons? Now, uh, we have to be very clear about this. State police is not vigilante. State police is the police. They are the police. You know, so uh, when we talk of federal police and all those people, you know, those are different people. But the real policing system is the state police. And these state police are to carry arms. In fact, state police is to carry specialized weapons. Specialized weapons. And then you find out that when we talk of uh, specialized weapons, it is the state police that owns what they call here SWAT. What, what, what uh, the, 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 the Americans call SWAT. SWAT means special weapons and tactics. And these people are different kinds of police. They don't go and do investigation or any kind of thing. They are training all the time. Training all the time. And when there are special situations, they call them out. When they call them out, they go there, they solve the problem, they go back. You know? So the state police itself is supposed to be given all kinds of weapons. Uh, ballistics weapons, uh, submarine weapons, uh, nine vision equipment. Yeah. These are the special equipments that they could use in, you know, doing their job. So it is, it is already given that state police should be carrying those special weapons. Given the experience we had during the First Republic with the native authority police that the Emias misused, don't you have both some fears? Don't yes, the fear is there because all these, um, you have all these um, uh, people trying to misuse the police. Uh, you have uh, native, uh, native authority police. Uh, even the Hizba right now in Kano, you know, in some areas, they are being misused. You know, but what we are trying to say is that when they are forming the state police, every state, every state police is not the same. Every state will be a different because they are going to enforce the laws of that state. And when they are forming them, the state house of assembly should set up the law in such a way that, you know, it meets the requirement of that state. You know, so... Uh, we are now talking about, um, uh, you know, um, how do I put it now? They, they don't have to. They, don't, they have to be autonomous and they have to have some kind of measures to put in place in such a way that the political authority does not abuse them. And then, of course, uh, the native authority does not abuse them. I know that we have a situation where some uh, traditional rulers are now trying to also gain access to uh, uh, the, the law enforcement situation. So we don't want that to happen. And the laws creating them should clearly state it so that we don't have um, interference when they are doing their work. I guess we have to leave it there. I would thank you. The, um, the Deputy Director of the State Department, so is the former Deputy Director, that's Dennis Amakuri. I want to thank you for your intervention here this afternoon. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Mm. Thank you for having me.
All right, and finally, like a shining star in a dark cloud, the ministry.